YouTube. What's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Sadiq Charles and Cornelius Lucas. Now, we have a lot of position battles coming into training camp, but we're going to be talking about every position or every category, whether that's offensive line in this case or running backs in the next video, linebackers. We're going to be talking about everything because under Ron Rivera's new regime, he uses this word that I know a lot of Redskins fans are starting to get sick of, but I love it. It's competition and you got to compete. He's not just going to hand out jobs. So in this case, in this video, we're going to be talking about Cornelius Lucas and Sadiq Charles. Now, I both made videos about these two in the past, but we're going to talk about who is the best fit for week one and who is the best, you know, for the future moving forward. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you can notify when I upload a video about the NFL. In this case, I watch the Redskins. Let's get straight into today's video. <laughs> this video very simple and very quick but that's boring you guys want to hear some talk about the Redskins I know that's what you guys came for this video literally could be two minutes long but we're not gonna make it that because we know what you guys came for so a lot of talks about Sadiq Charles being the left tackle for the Washington Redskins and Cornelius Lucas playing left tackle and or right and a lot of people are, you know, it's mixed feelings, you know. Uh, when I when someone did a poll about who should start a left tackle, Sadiq Charles or um, Cornelius Lucas, it kind of was more towards Sadiq Charles, but you still had that fair share of people, and you still have that fair share of people on my channel who believes that um, Cornelius Lucas should start. Now, I'm here to tell you guys who I believe should start at uh, left tackle, and it's, it should come to no surprise, but Cornelius Lucas, on the other hand, he could play left and right tackle. And what I like about him the most and why I believe that we need to keep him around for the future is just because the dude is 6'9". The dude is 6'9". He is literally huge, man. And he's been putting in a lot of work this offseason, as a lot of our Redskins players have shown. But this guy, we got him from the Bears, and he's been putting in a lot of work. And the reason why I say keep him around for, you know, obviously depth and stuff like that, but he could possibly grow into a starting position next year. Just in case, you know, Morgan Moses messes up this year, I don't see him being around anytime anymore after this year if he does, you know, have a terrible year. Like I say, it can't get no worse than Morgan Moses. But at the same time, or should I say rather, it could be worse than Morgan Moses. But I feel as though that we have a nice backup in Cornelius Lucas if Morgan Moses does have a terrible season yet again. But Morgan Moses, on the other hand, I feel as though that Morgan Moses is going to come back. And, you know, he has a chip on his shoulder. He wants to put everybody wrong. And I'm pretty sure that he knows what the circumstances is with the Washington Redskins. I mean, you have a coach that didn't draft you, um, and you have a coach that's just not that's just going to have competition. So you could be Morgan Moses, Trent Williams, whatever. But if a guy by the name of Cornelius Lucas or just an unknown guy coming in out battle you, he could take your spot. So the reason why I say keep Cornelius Lucas around for the, the for the near future is just in the case, like I said, Morgan Moses messes up. Boom, slide Cornelius Lucas right in there. Or even if Morgan Moses still is still the right tackle for the future and he and he, you know, he plays actually better than the past couple of years has been, still keep Cornelius Lucas around because he's gonna be a, a great depth piece. And I, that's what we brought him in here for was depth, but a possible uh starting position. But if Cor if Morgan Moses gets his act right, still keep Cornelius Lucas on board. Just because you never know what can happen. Injuries. Uh, suspensions, whatever, God forbid any of those things happen, but you gotta have good depth. Every good team has good depth, and when one goes out, one comes in. I know you guys remember the phrase that the Seahawks used to use back in the day, 12th man, and I know there's different phrases for it or different meanings for it, but some people said that it was for the next man up. 
the next man up. If someone went down, the next person came up. So that's the kind of phrase that we need to take here in D.C., especially with our trenches, guys. Whether that's offensive line, defensive line, we need a depth. So with that being said, who should start at left tackle come week one versus Philly? We know Philly got that nasty pass rush. Um... They got Fletcher Cox, of course. They got Brandon Ingram. I think they no. They do they still have? Uh, I think they still have the. I forgot his name. I can't remember his name. He made the he made the play on Tom Brady and Super. I think it's Brandon Ingram. But I feel like I'm thinking about the basketball player. I it can correct me if I'm wrong. Number fifty five, Brandon Ingram, something like that. Uh, but they have a they have a nasty pass rush, and they added some some more help this free agency, and it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. So with that being said. Obviously, we don't have Trent Williams anymore, but who is going to be that replacement for left tackle? Who's going to be that replacement for left tackle? I mean, we got Keith Ishmael, who's a center, but he could play all around the offensive line. But who should start at left tackle come week one against Philly? It's no, it's a no-brainer. In my opinion, it's a no-brainer. I think it should be Sadiq Charles, only because we need. I'm a fan of just throwing them out there. I'm a fan of just throwing the guys out there. I don't like like what Dwayne Haskins did last year. I know this is a different uh you know kind of circumstance, but what we did with Dwayne Haskins last year, we should have just thrown him out there. Honestly, if you knew this season was gonna go on down in the drain, you should have just thrown him out there because it couldn't have got no worse. It couldn't have got no worse. I mean, you had a coach on a hot seat, um, you had a, a president that you wanted to get rid of. So what worse could have been that? Uh, what worse could it have gotten that you would put your rookie um, quarterback out there? Uh, to, you know, be thrown in the fire. Thrown in the fire like you did for week four, week eight. You know how they throw him in the fire in spurts. They should have just let him play the whole season. In Sadiq Charles' case, throw him in the fire. Don't let him just sit back and, and, and spend his rookie season somewhat developing on the sidelines because, I mean, it's nothing like getting that actual NFL game speed in. I mean, because all you can be doing all this practice during the weeks and just sitting out for his rookie season and stuff like that, but you don't know the actual game speed until you actually play. So, therefore, with Dwayne Haskins, I mean, I know they had him playing with the scout team and stuff like that, but I can't. I keep making this, this comparison because it's the only comparison that I can make for the Redskins and um, from the you know the closest thing that just happened. So with that being said, you have to give him. You gotta put him out there because if you don't, just like Dwayne Haskins, he was practicing all week with the scout team. I know it was with the scout team, but he was still practicing and they were trying to get him better. But you seen what happened when you got him out there? Yes, you could say they throw him in the fire unexpectedly, but still you can tell that he was uncomfortable and he didn't know the NFL game speed. So I'm a fan of just throwing Sadiq Charles out there, let him get in the game speed under his belt, so he can know how it is being a Washington Redskins and how it is playing in the NFL. Because I mean, I know. You guys seen Sadiq Charles highlight tape from college. This guy can keep a pocket clean. I mean, for for an example, it was um, I think it was the game versus uh, I think it was Georgia. I could be wrong or Clemson, one of them. Um, where this dude literally gave Joe Burrow, I want to say at least. 10 to 15 seconds in the pocket. He kept the pocket clean. And I mean, I know you got the right side doing his thing, but they only show Sadiq Charles. He literally kept Joe Burrow clean. This guy, Joe Burrow, could have fell asleep, took a nap, woke up, and still would have had a clean pocket. So that's this, this guy has potential to replace Trent Williams. I'm not saying be as great, but it, we're going to have a guy that can replace Trent Williams. So I'm a fan of just throwing Sadiq Charles out there because if you don't, it could possibly mess him up and possibly, you know, not get him scared or anything, but you don't know how he is reacting to game speeds. I mean, college is a whole different level than the NFL. I mean, I guess you can say he kind of knows what the NFL speed is like because, I mean, they made it to the national championship, and that's the biggest stage of them all as far as college football aspect goes. But it's nothing like the NFL game speed. And I'm just a fan of just throwing out rookies out there because you let them get, you let them get the feel of the game, and then you see how they react. Now, if he gets out there and he starts to play terrible, then you put in the veteran Cornelius Lucas just because you like, okay, we gave you a shot. We know we let you we let you play, and we gave you the shot to you know prove that you that you can handle game speed. Now that we did, and you didn't handle it well or as well as we expected you to or wanted you to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna coach you up. 
We're going to coach you up. We're going to get you rest with the first team, second team, and then, therefore, you can take off in the near future. Because I'm telling you, Sadiq Charles is going to be a pro bowler. Probably not this year, but in the near future, I promise you that. The guy shows it. If he can stay on the field and stay healthy and, you know, not health healthy as far as injury-wise that goes, but, you know, stay on the field and stay having the off-field issues. Um, they toned down on the marijuana use, so, I mean, I guess he'll be fine if he does smoke marijuana because I think that's what he did get in trouble for. I could be wrong, but that's what I think that's what he got suspended. But with that being said, um, Cornelius Lucas, he can be a good depth piece. But I'm just a fan of throwing Corn uh, um, Sadiq Charles out there week one. Just because I know how good he is. And if you haven't, look up his highlights. And I know it's rare to look up offensive linemen highlights. But if you really love, you know, football and the Redskins and just the new draft picks that we pick, you would want to watch his highlights because this guy is, is nasty. Pass plays, he can he can give your quarterback time. Like I said, gave Joe Burrow at least ten to fifteen seconds in the pocket. And I'm not saying that's gonna happen every play, but that's just to show you how good he is, how long he can block for. On screens, he's out there like Trent Williams diving at a cornerback's legs. He's he's nasty, man. He gets that lead block on running plays. He opens up gaping holes for your running back. And I know Adrian Peterson's gonna go to love him. So Adrian Peterson, Darius Guy's gonna go to love him. But with that being said, I just like how athletic he is. I like linemen that's not going to be afraid to, on screen plays, go out there and, and, and block for, you know, your running back. I see him as being the, the, the best friend for Bryce Love and, J, and uh, J.D. McKissick and or uh, Antonio Gibson. More Antonio Gibson and Bryce Love on screen plays than J.D. McKissick. But I can see that being like a Trent Williams or Chris Thompson. Like, you know, every time, every time Chris, um, Chris Thompson got a screen pass, who did you see leading the way? Trent Williams. So I can see something like that happening here. So with that being said, I'm just a fan of throwing our rookies out there. So without further ado, it's Benny Boy and Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, and hello to the Redskins, and turn on post notifications so you can notify when I upload a video about the NFL. In this case, I watched the Redskins, and I'm all for Cornelius Lucas starting week one. Let me know what you guys think down below. Peace.